Owners of the 91-year-old bridge have asked Michigan's Transportation Department to allow trucks carrying flammable, chemical, or corrosive materials to cross the bridge. In the meantime, local lawmakers are trying to put a stop to that request, while other leaders say they back the change. Local 4 defender Karen Drew has been talking with all the sides on this and has the latest on this growing and very heated controversy that has one Detroit community very worried. The big concern here is if trucks are allowed to cross the Ambassador Bridge and carry hazardous materials, what happens if there's a spill? What does it mean to the people here in this community, the environment, and really our economy, as this is the busiest trade crossing in North America? Approximately 10,000 trucks cross the Ambassador Bridge every day. Now the bridge owners are pushing for a change to allow flammable and corrosive materials to be transported over the bridge. This is a, um, a, a health and safety issue. Senator Stephanie Chang represents Michigan's first district. She says she's fighting for the residents who live near the bridge. We don't need to be adding uh, potential hazardous material spills into onto the bridge or into our river as another cause for concern. If something happens to the bridge, we are going to have an economic breakdown like nobody's ever seen. That's Greg Ward. He runs the Detroit Windsor Truck Ferry. His ferry is allowed to transport trucks carrying hazmat and admits this change would affect his business. We've done it for 30 years. The trucks go on, they park, and they go one mile across the river and discharge. They're away from the public, away from residences. Besides using the truck ferry, trucks carrying hazmat must travel to Sarnia and Port Huron to cross the Blue Water Bridge. When I talked with bridge company president Dan Stamper, he said allowing the Ambassador Bridge this change would increase net safety for all Metro Detroiters. Wayne County Sheriff Benny Napoleon agrees. I know that going across the bridge puts some people in danger, but it's fewer pe people than it would be if they had to use an alternate route that would through uh, more and more residential uh, communities. But what happens if there's a spill? Throughout the, the, the southeast region, we have, uh, you know, police agencies trained to respond to hazmat incidents uh, consistently. The bridge owners say they have a new fire suppression system to handle such emergencies. But in a recent letter from MDOT to the bridge company, the state mentions a 2018 inspection report that did not note the presence of such system. That inspection did also state the bridge was in good condition and no repairs were recommended. We can't treat this as if it's a public entity. It isn't. It is a private company that wants to handle something that is very, very much uh, dangerous for the public. This is very dangerous, toxic waste. U.S. Representative Rashida Tlaib is also in the fight trying to stop the bridge's request. Many of the residents in the neighborhoods that are nearby, I mean, there's parks and schools, uh, communities, very vibrant communities and neighborhoods near the Ambassador Bridge that do not want hazardous waste. Right now, MDOT is considering the bridge's request, but at the same time, looking for more information like cleanup and contingency plans. Reporting in Southwest Detroit, I'm Karen Drew, Local 4 Defenders. Yeah, all right, Karen, the Wayne County Commission unanimously voted to urge Michigan officials to block the bridge from allowing the hazmat to be transported.